Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to the Own Your Genius podcast, where we discuss building businesses, growing brands, and owning your genius. I'm your host, brand attorney with Kanye Murray. We got a good one for you today, so let's get started. So, this week I hosted my first virtual co working session. And for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's basically when you and other people meet online at a designated time and place together and work on your individual projects. It gives you an opportunity to see other adults and increase your productivity just in case. Well, in this case, it was kind of more of a networking, co-working session because I was super excited just to have other people join me because I only gave you guys like 24 hour notice and you still showed up and I'm excited and we got to see other people and we got to talk and we got to hang. It was a great opportunity really and to meet my community and meet some new people. And what was supposed to be a one hour gathering ended up stretching to almost two and a half hours and I knocked out a lot of um, smaller projects. More importantly, I had a chance to listen and learn how this period of social distancing is affecting some of you all. I learned that everybody's situation is different. You have some people who are considered essential workers and have no choice but to go to work. Then you have other people who find that work is drying up. But overall, there's a sense of uncertainty, right? You got the people going to work not knowing that the people they're coming in contact with will be will affect them with the coronavirus and you have people who are staying at home so that they're not affected and they're trying to figure out how where their income is going to come from or how they should be serving their community even in this time of uncertainty i am so proud to be connected with the people um, who aren't letting this uncertainty stop them now this doesn't mean that they haven't had to take a moment or two to process what's going on and how it's affecting them and finding the new normal there are some there are so many messages on how small business owners should be operating in this time to sell or not to sell is the question some of you all have but personally i think that this question really stems from another which is how do we help our clients in this time? Because if you're considering giving your products or service away for free or not offering them at all, that's not about you. You're not doing that for your benefit. You're doing it out of consideration for your clients and customers. You want to be of service in this time and you really haven't figured out how. So today I'm going to give you five ways you can be of service to your clients and community during this time. The first thing you can do if you're trying to help your community or your clients is to continue to show up. This is not the time to ghost your clients. You can't just disappear. You need to communicate with them now more than ever, especially if the way you're showing up is going to be affected by COVID-19. I don't know. Maybe you have kids at home and your availability has changed. I know that um, just recently I've added the titles principal, teacher, and guidance counselor guidance counselor to my list of titles my normal schedule for this week was shot like literally shot i was still able to work but just not doing the normal time and flows that i normally would for you maybe your inventory is out of stock and delayed because of the um, importation communicate and update with your clients and, and community this includes on social media as well. If you normally post every day or go live once a week or whatever your schedule is, stick to showing up even if the times have changed. When you continue to show up, it's so reassuring to your community. It gives people hope and it encourages them to do the same. It lets them know what's going on. Having this consistency is important during this time when everything else is up in smoke. So the first thing you can do for your community is to continue to show up. The second thing you can do, instead of giving your service away or your product away for free, offer an alternative payment option. People, I don't know. I don't know what y'all are hearing, but I know for a fact that people are still out here spending money. And they're spending money on things that they consider valuable. And if you are providing a valuable service or product, there's no reason for you to offer it for free unless you just really want to out of the kindness of your heart for for some unknown reason. But even though people are spending money, some people are spending money a little bit differently than they were before. So they're still getting these services, right? They still want to buy your services, but maybe they're being more considerate of their funds and spending it a little bit differently. So for those people, you can offer payment plans. Personally, I offer law away plans for just a select few of my clients. And what that is, is I allow them to pay for their services um, in installments. 
if you're not comfortable with payment plans, you can offer, I don't know, reduced service or product. You can, you can offer a reduced service or product at a reduced price. For example, your signature program may include several different elements. You know, it might offer consulting with pre-recorded videos and live training. For those of you, for those people who want to work with you, but they're also watching their spending, instead of offering the entire program, right, break it out in parts and offer it at a reduced rate. So instead of the consulting pre-recorded videos and live training for $1,200, maybe offer them just the pre-recorded videos for $600. And then if they want the consultation after they finish the pre-recorded video, then you can charge that separately. That way, the people are still getting the help. You're still earning income, but you're not earning less income for the amount of work that you're doing. I'm in a, a group where one of the people says that what they're doing is taking their client's billing, they're, they're suspending it until the end of April without late fee or penalty. Um, some landlords are doing the same. These are just a few examples. Uh, a few examples. As a matter of fact, then I'm thinking about it. I'll give you a little legal tea here. The was Mark. Cuban, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, as soon as this thing hit uh, in the stadium and the NBA stopped playing, he committed to offering the workers of the stadium payment. Like he was going to keep paying their income while while this was happening because he knows that that was his way of serving his community and giving back and that they are the backbone of that stadium. You know, it's just not people think of, you know, NBA and they think, oh, it's just the ball players not playing. No, so many different people were affected. So what I want you to do is get creative and find something that works for you and your customers. The third thing that you can do to serve your community, and I really like this one a lot, you can invite them for a virtual tea or a coffee. Now, to be clear, this is not a free consultation, but it's a genuine opportunity to get together. So don't let a little thing like social distancing stop you from networking. You know, networking is defined as actions or the process of interacting with others to exchange information and develop professional and social contacts. The key thing about networking is that it's about sharing, not taking. So you're not going to this virtual tea trying to sell and try to take, take, take from this other person. You are showing up. To listen to the other person to see how you can be of service to them. Again, I don't mean sell. Uh, maybe they're looking to buy a house and you know the perfect realtor. So you're going to be able to refer them to that. Networking is the exchange of ideas. You never know what someone else has to offer. Plus, it's always good to get out of the house. Mm. Or in this case, interact with humans who don't live in your house. Right? Y'all feel me? Okay. The fourth thing that you can do in this season, in this season of social distancing to connect with your people or to service your people is to realize that the range of how people are dealing with this is is wide, man. You have some people who are like really nonchalant with it and you have some people who are literally freaking out. And so while people are managing just fine and others not so much, you never know what someone is going through, which is why this is a great time to practice empathy. Now, empathy is when you understand how someone is feeling, even though you don't share the same feeling. Empathy is the key component. It's, it's the reason we're able to show compassion for others. I think that when we're able to empathize, we're going to find creative ways to bring joy to the world. I also think that if we empathize with people, we'll have a lot less um, Twitter wars or keyboard tough. That's what my father-in-law says, that when people get on the internet and they just start typing ugly comments and things to one another is we'll have a lot of people, a lot less people being keyboard tough with, if we're able to show empathy, we'll have a lot less people telling people how they should be running their businesses in their life. If we're able to show empathy, uh, one person that was able to show empathy or a result of empathy was DJ D nice. You know, he hosted homeschool club quarantine on Instagram. He did it like three days in a row and he's still doing it for different organizations. But one night he did, he DJ for nine hours live, nine hours of straight DJ and straight dropping hits on us left and right. It was so awesome. And his message, his message on Instagram was, Hey, let's continue to uplift each other as we get through this dark times. That's what empathy can do. When you have em show empathy to your clients and to your community, you're able to show compassion. You're able to find creative ways to bring joy into the world. The fifth way 
okay, and I talked about this a little bit earlier, if you want to help boost productivity in your tribe, try hosting a virtual co-working session. I'm an introvert by nature, uh, but I thought that hosting a co-working session would be super helpful for my people. I was listening to them in the Facebook group and some of the challenges they were having, so I was like, hey, let's, let's do this. But let me tell you, the joke was on me, right? Because it wasn't just helpful for them. It was super helpful for me. I didn't realize how much I missed seeing people. It was great catching up and seeing facial expressions and body language and all that stuff that you don't do when you're sitting social distancing at home with your folks or if you're picking up the phone. You can't see any of that stuff. But through video, you're able to catch all of that. And I'll tell you, I was a little stressed about how to host this session because I'd never done it before. And in the back of my head, I was praying that it wouldn't turn out like my the Halloween party that I threw in eighth grade when nobody showed up. It was just me, my daddy, and a bunch of candy and cupcakes. Uh, but that wasn't the case. So in this case, I wasn't really worried about people not showing up. It was really the opposite. I was worried about people showing up and nothing working and I would look like an idiot. But it turned out to be super, super simple. Um, if you're interested in doing a co-working session, I use my Ring Central account because Ring Central uses Zoom as their video conferencing host. So if you don't use Ring Central for your telephone, um, use Zoom. And so with Zoom, you just um, email people the link. I told I emailed the link, told people to turn their cameras on, and voila! When they came in the room, the cameras were on. We, you know, we we chatted, you know, audio you know, just talking. Then we also use the chat box. So for mine was kind of like a, a co, what is it? A, a co, uh, what am I trying to say? Networking slash co-working session. So we did a lot of talking and we did some working as well. Everyone who participated in it found it super duper helpful. And even the people who kind of hung out in the background, so there were, cause there's always going to be the people that kind of don't turn their camera on, but they're listening and they're chatting in the box and things. Even they found it helpful just to interact with people. You should definitely try hosting some sort of co-working, either co-working, co-working session or happy hour or something of that nature with your tribe. It's, it was so much fun. I'm going to add one more thing to the list. I know I said that I was going to give you five. I know I said I'm going to give you the top five things that you can do to serve your community. But I got to add this one on there. I got to add the sixth thing you can do you can, to serve your community because it's often overlooked. But it's super important. This is, this is number six. You ready? You have to take care of yourself. You have to take care of yourself during this time. And I'm not just talking about bubble baths and wine and candles. I'm talking about exercising, journaling, staying prayed up, affirming yourself. I'm talking about seeking the help of a therapist if this shift is causing you anxiety, depression, or just overwhelming feelings in general. And here's the thing. Because of COVID-19, many insurance companies have expanded their coverage to include telehealth care, which is awesome. And mental health professionals are making themselves available to serve patients who need to speak to them in this time. So even in this period of social distancing, you're still able to c connect with people who can serve you. You don't have to go through this alone. You don't have to struggle alone. As the old saying goes, what is it? You can't pour from an empty cup. You cannot pour from an empty cup, people. You have to take care of you. And don't be ashamed to do it. Look into it. And you can go to platforms, uh, Black Girls, Black Girl Therapy. I think that's what it's called, Black Girls Therapy. And you can find a list of therapists there. Yeah, I think that's the name of the site, Black Girls Therapy, where you can find a list of therapists in your area that can serve you. Just so you, we, we went through a lot of things today. You can serve others by doing what? Continuing to show up, even if you had to show up a little differently than you were showing up before. And communicate those changes to your people. You can serve by offering alternative payment options. That way people can continue to be served by you and you can continue to get paid. You can have a virtual tea or coffee so you can expand your network. Showing empathy is uber duper important during this time. And hosting a virtual co-working session to boost productivity. Yes. Yes, please. And last but definitely not least, take care of yourself. So you heard what I had to say about serving your clients. How are you serving your clients during this time? Are you showing up? Are you still showing up every day? Are you offering any time, any type of alternative payment arrangements or even meeting with them virtually, whether it's for tea, networking or co-working session? 
Are you making sure to take care of yourself? I want to hear how you're doing. So go to LaConyaMurray.com and tell me in the comments, what are you doing during this time to take care of and, and still show up and serve for your community? If you're on my email list, I'm going to open up my calendar for virtual tea and I'm also going to host another co-working session. If you're not on the list, the easiest way to join is to t go to Facebook, join my Facebook group, The Genius Lounge. It's a group for entrepreneurs. And until next time, take care of yourself, all right? Keep building your business, growing your brand, and most importantly, owning your genius.